explaining to me this this cycle that I go through of, of, of rainy season and drought. And can I use that analogy? You understand that. Rainy season and drought. Rain being wet represents the Holy Spirit, right? Water represents the Holy Spirit. Drought meaning the lack thereof, the wet. Okay? So he started showing me how all this how this cycle was actually orchestrated by him. Any farmer should understand that. There's got to be rainy seasons, but there's got to be a dry time. And the Lord showed me that. I said, wow, Lord, I never saw that. There's got to be the dry time. He said, I orchestrated it for there to be dry time. Because it's in the dry time that you plow the ground. And it's in the dry time that you sow the seed. See, if it was never dry, how could you plow the ground? Wet soil doesn't plow. Wet soil balls up, and it makes a big mess. But dry ground, you can work. Dry ground, you can plow. Dry ground, you can sow a seed. Then, then expect the rain. You see the cycle? You see how it... How it God designed this. And when he showed me that, it's like a weight lifted off of me. I said, Lord, not only am I normal, I'm right in the middle of your will. I'm not, I'm right in the middle of what you want to do when I go through a dry time. That's good news. That's good news. So don't let the devil lie to you anymore when you go through those dry times. Don't let the devil get to you and convince you that there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's part of God's plan. It's part of his design. It's just the way things work. That we will always go through seasons. Always go through seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. It says, To everything there is a season, a time and a purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what was planted or reaped. There's a time to plant. When is that? That's in the dry time. There's a time to reap. When is that? That's in the dry time too. But it's after the rain season. See? You can't even harvest a crop when it's wet. There are crops that, that stay in the fields and rot on the vine because it was too wet to get in there and harvest them. You know, it's, it's a seemingly spiritual feast or a spiritual famine, but don't see it that any way anymore. Don't see it as spiritual famine anymore. See it as an opportunity. Don't see it as a famine. See it as an opportunity to get in there and work the ground. See it as an opportunity to sow the seed. This is one of the, the key things that the Lord showed me. See, when a famine comes, the, the, the temptation or the danger of a famine is that you're, you get tempted to eat whatever is available because you don't like being there mm -hmm. and you want to get somewhere else. So if you don't like where you're at and you want to go where you're not, you have to do something that you're not doing. You know, So the temptation is there to eat whatever is available. We, un we can understand this principle of, of what you don't eat now. When you get hungry enough, you will eat. But I want to give us a warning. Don't let that transfer over into your spiritual life. If it's not fit for consumption, I'm talking about spiritual things, I'm talking about the Word. If it's not con fit for, for consumption in the rainy season, it's not fit for consumption in the drought. Don't compromise your standards just to get out of drought. Don't compromise your standards just to get out of drought. I want to I read us a little, a little passage. and it's you, Some of you may know it, maybe not, but it's where I got my title. It's in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head sold for eight shekels of silver and one-fourth of a calf of dung dro uh, dove droppings 
sold for five shekels. So not only were they eating donkey heads and dove dung, they were willing to pay for it. They were willing to pay what they had for it. So the temptation is there in a drought to consume. These folks would not have eaten donkey head and dove dung before the drought. But in the middle of the drought, not only were they willing to eat it, they were willing to buy it. You see what I'm saying? So when you get in, a, in the middle of a drought, when you get in, in, in where you feel like you're famished spiritually, don't grab a hold of something that's substandard. Don't grab a hold of something and eat it that you wouldn't have eaten when the grass was green and the water was flowing. Just because something is new, just because something is fresh, don't mean it's true. Just because it's new, and just because it's fresh, and just because it tickles your ears, doesn't mean it's true. And the Lord showed me, he said, most people who are led astray into false teaching are brought there in a time of drought. And they're looking for a new and fresh word. And somebody says something that makes them feel bubbly inside, and they say, that's what I need to get out of this drought, and they grab a hold of it. Don't be tempted to settle for the donkey head and the side of dove dung because it looks good in a time of drought. Don't settle for something that's that's not of God just because you're in a drought. Just because it tickles the ears and gives you a warm feeling inside. You know, the truth of the word doesn't always make you feel good. We can turn on, on Christian TV, and, and I'm not against anybody that preaches word that makes you feel good. But the truth is not that way all the time. It's just not. It's just not. We have a loving father. Right? Amen. He loves us. I love my boys. But I'm not going to... I love them too much to make them feel good all the time. Because if they felt good all the time, I'd have two spoiled boys. Agreed? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, am I saying that God punishes you? No, no I'm, not, I'm not saying that. But there's also a reality side of this word. There's a reality. We go through things. God allows us to go through things. I don't care what anybody tells you. God will allow you to go through some things. He will let you. Well, did he prevent Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from being thrown into the fire? No. He let them get thrown in there. They weren't burned. He was in there with them, and they were protected, but nevertheless, they were thrown in the fire. And that's a principle for our lives. God will let you go through the fire. He'll protect you while you're in it. He'll walk you through it. You won't be consumed, but nevertheless, we will walk through fire. Nevertheless, we will go through that valley. Nevertheless, we will have that Philistine giant that comes to us. You will. That's why he told us, speak to that now. That's why, that's why he gave us the full armor of God. If we weren't ever going to be confronted by anything, why would we need armor? If, there's, if he tells you, make sure you put on your armor, that must mean there's fixing to be a battle. He loves us that much. He loves us that much. He loves us enough to let us go through the fight because it's in the fight that we get stronger. It's in the fight. You know, it, in, in my zeal one time, I was young and I had some, some chickens and one of my chickens had laid a, a clutch of eggs and, and they were I was watching them and they were starting to hatch. And one of them little chickens was pecking at that shell and he was working at it, working at it, working at it. So I just decided I'm going to help him out. I'm going to give this old boy a break. So I broke the shell, and I helped that little chicken, and he got out. And guess what happened to that little chicken? He died. Because, unbeknownst to me, that it's the struggle getting out of the shell that strengthens his little muscles to get him strong enough to be able to live once he gets out. And I helped him, and he didn't get strong enough. I helped him to death. I helped him to death. That reminds me of uh, Brother Holton. I shared that Wednesday night about Brother, uh, Brother Holton, our, our old pastor. He had a life-threatening illness, and he, he was out on the uh, out evangelizing and uh, traveling <laughs> the country preaching the gospel. And when he got that illness, he didn't go home, but he, he stayed away because he said if he had gone home, he said his mother and his grandmother would have loved him to death. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I said that to say, to make my point that God loves you too much to not allow you to go through some things. He loves you too much to not let you struggle sometimes. He loves you too much not to let you go through the fight. But remember, when you're in the fight, when you're in the struggle, when you're in the valley, when, when you're in the drought, he's right there with you. And he's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you fail if you keep depending on him. If you walk away from him, hey, what happens happens. You're at the mercy of the devourer at that point. But as long as you hold on to him, he's going to get you through it. And you, when you come out on the other side, you're going to be stronger. Amen. You will be stronger. Amen? Amen? That's a proven fact, isn't it? You ever been through something? If it doesn't consume you, you come out stronger. Amen. If it doesn't consume you, you'll come out stronger. And I said, if it doesn't consume you, because if you keep following the Lord, if you listen to his instruction, if you follow his prompting, it makes you stronger. If not, it will consume you. So not only were they willing to eat the head, the donkey head and the dove dung, but they were willing to pay for it. So when we go through spiritual drought, we feel the urgency to get out. So we look for a word to feed on. And like I said, unfortunately, that's where many people find false teaching and get off into error and get led astray is when they're in a dry season. Don't settle for the donkey head. Don't settle for the dove dung in a drought when it's not something you would have settled for, not something you would have eaten in the rainy season. Don't settle for that. Make sure that you're feeding on the truth of the word. Make sure you're feeding on the truth of the word. It's in a dry season that the seed of the word can be sown into prepared soil, the prepared soil of the heart so that when the rain of the spirit falls, it can produce a crop and we can reap a harvest. In a spiritual drought, there's a temptation. Get this. In a spiritual drought, there's temptation to wallow in self-pity, settle for less, and die in that place rather than work the ground and sow the seed. In a spiritual drought, there's a temptation to wallow in self-pity, to stay right there, to refuse to work the ground, and to die in that place rather than working the ground, sowing the seed, and praying for rain. That's what we're supposed to do in a spiritual dry time. Work the ground, sow the seed, pray for rain. How long do we stay in a drought? As long as it takes us to work the ground, sow the seed, pray for rain. They settled it. That's what the Samaritans did. In that drought, they settled for a donkey's head. And they settled for dove dung but they refused to get out and work the ground. They weren't out there plowing the soil. They weren't out there sowing seed. They were wallowing in self-pity, and they were eating on the donkey head. No, it got worse than that. I tell you what, it got so bad. One lady was complaining. She had gone to the leaders, and she was complaining about her neighbor because she said, my neighbor told me that we could cook my child and eat him today. And we would cook hers and eat, her, eat it tomorrow. Well, now tomorrow came and she refused to give me her child. And we ate mine yesterday. Wow. If you stay, if you refuse, I wasn't even going to get to that part, but the Lord just quickened that in me. If you refuse in the drought to work the salt, to sow the seed, to pray for rain, and you choose to stay in that place, what happens is you start to consume those around you. You start to feed on those who love you. Have you seen it? Have you seen that? I have. If you stay in that place, if you stay in that drought, if you settle for what's there, you'll start devouring those around you. Second mm. Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in the rainy season. Be ready in the drought, is what he's saying. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. 
Long suffering, what's that? What does that mean? That's pretty self explanatory. Long suffering means to suffer long. <laughs> How long? As long as it takes. We don't like that word right there, long suffering. That won't be able to be a church. If you use that word a lot, you'll preach to a very small crowd before long. But that's reality. That's, that's the truth of the gospel. God didn't put that in there because he didn't mean it. He wants us to endure. He wants us to press through. He wants us, no matter what it takes, we're going to get through this. Preach the word in drought and in rain season. Just because I'm in a drought, that don't mean you have to know about it. That doesn't mean I can't go out there with a smile on my face. That doesn't mean I have to crawl into a shell, be, become reclusive. And, and stay in my bed with the light out and not want anybody to see me because I'm going through a spiritual drought. No, I'm supposed to be out there preaching the word with a smile on my face. One of the things uh, Brother Terry Mai said, and I, I'm going to take something that he said meaning with a natural meaning, and I'm going to just plop it into this bit right here. But he said, and y'all probably remember this, he said, I don't want people to ever know if I've got a dollar in my pocket or if I've got a million. I don't want people to know if I'm going through a spirit, I'm on top of a spiritual mountain or if I'm at the lowest part of the valley. You should know that. That's between me and God. That's a season he has me in. But what should be on my face when I'm out there is a smile. There should be joy in my heart. There should be pep in my step. There should be healing in my words. Amen? Amen. That should be, that that should never change. What's going on in here between me and God when we're going through our seasons, that should never be transmitted on my face. I'm not saying it won't at times, but it should never be. I should never let it get there. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. What, how should this man be? What's the first word? Blessed. 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 Who wants to be blessed? Yeah. Nobody? Yeah. You want to be blessed? Yeah. Blessed is the man, and he says, that does something here. Okay? Who, who, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a, like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when the heat comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will it cease to yield fruit Ooh. so did he say blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord because drought's never going to come to him he said no even in the year of drought He's blessed. Even in the year of drought, he doesn't cease to yield fruit. So what are we to do in a time of drought, according to the last two scriptures? Preach the word and yield fruit. Preach the word, bear fruit. In season, out of season. Preach the word, bear fruit. No matter how you feel, you preach the word, you bear fruit. We don't have to be anxious or fearful when the drought comes. We can be fruitful. We can be fruitful. Even when we feel dry, we should be producing fruit. What's a tree do when there's a drought? What do you know what a tree's roots do when it gets when there's a drought? What's it do? They go deeper. They just dig deeper. And they find water. They just keep digging deeper. Don't waste the dry season. Don't waste the dry season. Use it wisely to prepare the soil and sow the seed. Rain is coming. Everybody say that with me. Rain is coming. Rain is coming. If you waste the dry season, you'll miss the harvest when the rain does come. If When it's the dry season, if you re become that recluse and you wallow in self-pity and you fail to prepare the soil and you fail to prepare the sow the seed, 
When the rain does come, you still don't get a harvest. What's the farmer do in the summer when it's dry? Does he sit in the house and say, oh, it's too dry. My crops will never grow. No, he gets out there and he works his ground. He works his ground. He sows a seed. Then he prays for rain. And then the seed gets watered. And the seed grows. And the, heart, and the crops produce. And they ripen. And then the dry season comes again. And he goes out there and he reaps with harvest. And it's a cycle. And it's a cycle. And it's a cycle. But if he cried about the lack of rain in the dry season and didn't work his soil, even when the rain comes, he still don't have a crop. He still has one, a bumper crop of weeds. And that's what we get. When we wallow in self-pity and we fail to sow the seed and prepare the soil, when the rain comes, the weeds grow higher. The kind of trees get thicker. When you feel dry, start preparing the seed bed. Search the heart. Remove the stones and get rid of the briars. See, something happens when it rains. I know we, we can't really relate here, but if you go out west, when it rains, you can, you can have a garden plowed up, tilled up, and work, and all the stones removed. But when it rains and you walk out there, guess what happens? You see stones that you didn't see before. Because the rain washed the dirt away. Now you can see them and you can get those out too. So when the dry times come in your life, search your heart and find those stones, the hard parts of your heart, and get rid of those. Get rid of the briars. What what what's what is a what's briars? It's those things in our life that when people get too close to them, they When, you get, when, when people get too close, we tend to cut them. That's what briars do. They'll cut you, hold on to you, grab you, make you bleed if you get too close. We have to search our heart and get rid of those kind of things. Nothing grows on a rock. Nothing grows on a rock. Now, you can look at a rock and say, well, I saw algae growing on this rock. No, you didn't. You saw it growing on the little pieces of dirt that were stuck to the rock. But if nothing grows on that rock, if it's a clean rock, nothing's wrong on it. So find the rocks in the heart that are taking up room, but they're not producing fruit, and get them out. Get rid of the briars. Get the seed of the word deposited and pray for the rain to fall. Pray for the rain to fall after we get the seed of the word deposited. And after the stones are removed, don't waste the dry seed. 